Welcome back to a Let's Play Gotta Watch Yoju. I feel like shit. Like as shit as my internet connection tends to be. But that's what called anyway, because uh it's like freaking nine. Well half past nine even. And uh I upload around like ten or eleven, so yeah, a bit of a delay. I slept through most of the day, my sleeping pattern has been absolutely shit. <laughs> Well, here the the summertime sun beats down on my sweating brow. Dabbing with a headshot doesn't help too much in making me any more comfortable. Giving up on the idea of getting no more damage, I stop and lean against one of the overpass fences, risking my back on the ground. The stores in the town below Yamaku are well stocked and offer enough variety for me to get by. But at least an occasional shopping trip to the city is something that can't really be ever, ever hear me. I've been here a few times now. This city's layout is getting more familiar, and the nostalgia from this atmosphere is beginning to work. I realize that I've begun to wheeze. I sound like an old man. Not really. That's over exerted himself and having to connect that to the fact that I'm uh, the source. Uh, is a bit disturbing. I put a hand on my chest and concentrate for a bit to make sure I haven't gone far enough to cause any fellow problems. Thankfully, my heart is acting normally. There's no doubt pain that the beat is regular, healthy, fast paced, and I recover from every good thing in this kind of heat. I hate my body. It's frustrating to be held back. Even more to be held back by fear of my life being ended, and doing something as simple as walking around the city for a while. As I plug on my health, I feel my pocket vibrating. By the time my phones begin to ring, my hand is already fishing for it. I glance at the screen, show the caller number I don't recognize. Strange. Shrugging, I press the button to answer the call and bring the phone to my ear. Hello, it's the guy speaking. Now talk normally now. Hello, uh, it's our guy speaking. So, uh, a couple of short breaths can be heard, but no actual speeches for the thing. Uh, hello? Sal? It's Hanako. Her voice is really easy to place, even if I've never heard it over a phone before. My ears. Hanako? Uh, sorry, I wasn't expecting to call. What's up? Um, I, um... If you're not busy, I, I was wondering if you would... I'd like to... Meet up? Uh, yes, um... I mean... She sounds really wound up about this. I can hear muffled voices in the background. It's about time for afternoon tea. So I guess you want to uh, meet me at... Meet her at the Shanghai or something. That sounds fine. Uh, you at the Shanghai. Um, in the city. And of course, yeah. Oh, that's a surprise. It's full of wonder she's like this. But she's surrounded by people and entirely by herself. That works out well. I'm just wandering around there now. Where are you? Hanako manages to stammer out the street name, address, and some basic directions to where she is. Luckily, it's not too far, so I agree to see her soon before hanging out. I look up to the sky, the summer heat is beating down. It's the first time Hanako has asked for us to do something together beyond a simple board game, and the first time, at least since I've known her, that she has come to the city by herself. Maybe this means that Lily was right. By the time I manage to stagger up to the cafe where Hanako is, I start to wheeze again. I'm sweating so much that I feel like a melting popsicle and can barely hold the bag in my hands. I need to sit down back. The table outside are all occupied by busily chatting couples and girls laughing between themselves. The contrast between the different age groups and fashions of the people here and the people from the town near Yamaku is striking. You know what this scene reminds me of? Every day is great at your Jesus. I scan over the people sitting at the tables. But I can't see Hanako. She did say she was sitting outside, so I may just be missing her. Not difficult given how small she usually tries to make her presence. I look around again more slowly this time, taking particular care to see if I can find Hanako's hat. It's very distinctive, and I'd be very surprised if she wasn't wearing it. There she is, sure enough. Her head is kept low and the table she's sitting on is right beside the building in an inconspicuous corner. I walk up to her where she is and make sure that I have her attention before I sit. 
quickly start and give her a scare. She notices me and gives a small wave as I arrive at her table. Are you feeling okay? I try my best to laugh it off, but doing so just makes me more out of breath. Ah, uh, not very fit these days. Don't mind me. Anko nods, but still looks a bit put off. Now that I can get a good look at her face, something about her seems a bit different. I'm not sure if my eyes are playing tricks on me, but she looks kind of nice. Well, it's just like, yeah, usually she looks like shit, but now she looks nice. Her eyes move upwards to look at me, before quickly flicking down again. I begin to think this is going to be a rather quiet meeting, but a waitress thankfully arrives and sets down a cup of tea in front of Anko. Anko almost automatically turns slightly away and lowers the side of her head. It's an amazingly practiced motion and does a good job of its intended purpose, hiding her scarf from someone who is leaning in close. Her right arm is still laying on the table, though, with the scarring on the back of her hand quite visible. It catches the waitress's eye and I move to quickly distract her. Excuse me, uh, may I place an order? The waitress nods and gives me a couple of seconds to look at the menu. Uh, can I have a mango smoothie, please? She gives a nod before almost enthusiastically bouncing inside. Everything is so different in the city, in more ways than one. Otako looks uh, back up towards me and adjusts her hat a little. If you notice the waitress staring at her scarves, she doesn't show it. Not coffee? Uh, I think I'd die from the seat if I had something like coffee right now. Resting my head in my hand, I look to my quiet companion. She seems taken aback, a very unexpected reaction to my main joke. An unwelcome emotion bubbles up inside me as I realize the reason why. Unlike most Nyamaku, indeed, unlike anyone there that I'm aware of, my condition goes beyond limiting the activities I can do. Not to be more precise, reaching those limits could have much more grave consequences. Thankfully, it's something that's very rarely come up since I entered Nyamaku. I thought that it was so rare that Tariko and Lily might not think of it at all. Turns out uh, that I was wrong. You know, with his heart condition, I mean, I don't really know much about the condition itself. But I really do wonder a bit about it, I mean, do they have, well obviously they have to live a bit more carefully because of it, but to what extent? Monica silently drinks her own tea while I wait for my drink, confirming that it's the right temperature with a small sip before she begins in earnest. I feel guilty for being the cause of an uncomfortable silence, since in the past I've been kind of hard on Hanukkah moments. Eventually the same waitress as before bounces up, handing me my drink. I got a change from my pocket and drop it into her waiting hand, before she goes off to attend to an old customer. My eyes linger on her as she walks away. Do you think that she looks... ready? Hanukkah is following my gaze, her eyes taken in the waitress that served us. I can feel my blood slowly go into my cheeks as I rest my smoothie back on the table. It's like that situation. <laughs> and that... Well, honestly, it's just... It's one of those things, isn't it? It's just like, whether it's just like... A girl that's interested in you, or maybe it's a girlfriend or your wife or whatever it is, and they'll just like, ask... So do you think that woman is pretty? And you're just like, in your head, just like... Uh, if if you think yes, you can't say yes because you don't know how they're gonna react to that. He's like, oh, really? Well, you fucking bastard. Just like, well, go freaking out with that bitch, and I'm fucking out of here. You know, just completely flip. You're just like, you're not allowed to find anyone else attractive, you asshole. And I can't really say that I'm really into that look. She just looked like uh, an old friend I knew before my heart attack. Did you have many friends? I had a few at my previous school, though I wouldn't say a lot. The four of us just hung around together at school and stuff. You know, the fact that he says the four of us kind of indicating how his group of friends were in size makes you kind of curious into what his old friends were like. How they looked, how they acted, their personalities, all that. Do you still talk to them? I shake my head. No, we gradually lost contact while I'm stuck in the hospital. You're not saddened by that. Or angry? Monica looks generally surprised. I guess it's the right reaction. Well, life did move on for them while I was stuck in the war. It's probably saw about it at the time, but now it's just a bunch of like memories. Besides, once I came to Maku, I found new friends as well. 
was quite a whitewash of what my feelings were back then. I went through some dark times during my stay at the hospital, and I really am glad that Hanako and Lily were around to help me after I left. Hanako blushes as we both get down to enjoying our drinks. She seems to have calmed down since I arrived. I've started to feel a little better now that I've had the chance to rest a bit. So it's getting to be a nice outing already. Even though she's calmer than before, though, she's still fidgeting a bit. She runs her hand down one of her bangs as I try to think of something to say. That's right, I was gonna ask. Hanako tilts her head quizzically. I didn't know you had a mobile phone. How did you get my number? Lily gave it to me. I should have guessed. You know, you should have just asked. You could have just asked. I'd have given it to you. Want to exchange email addresses? Hanako nods, settling down her drink and fishing out her phone from her pocket as I do the same. You know, we never see them use the internet at all, so this email address thing, do they, like, do they have the internet on their phones? Because this phone looks pretty damn old. It's surprisingly the same model as mine. Pink, though. Hmm. When was this visual novel made? That phone looks pretty old. I mean, my phone is also pretty old, but this might even be older than mine, I don't know. I imagine that camera is better than the one on mine, though. Like, with my eyesight nowadays, I compare my eyesight to the camera quality of my phone, because it's like, they remove the glasses and everything has a kind of blur to it. I mean, I can still see, but everything becomes a bit of a blur. Yeah, even looking at the monitor here, like, the leaves start to blur a little. It's only like, it's, well, slight difference, but everything else kind of feels like there's not much of a difference. That's because it's up close from a distance, much harder to work out things. Like, I can read that, it's surprisingly the same model as mine, pink though, without the glasses, but it does have a bit of a blur to it. That is pretty much how my eyesight is, and... I ended up rambling on about that because I was comparing it with my phone's camera, which is absolutely kind of crap. Nice phone. She looks to me with a curious expression before noticing my phone and giggling. It's one of the very few times I've seen Hanako let her guard down enough to lose such thing. I didn't pick it out myself, though. Oh? It was a present from Lily. I never really needed a phone and I couldn't afford one. She bought me one for Christmas though, saying that we sure I used to keep in touch. Though I see each other basically every day anyway, both in and out of school. Then again, Lily does have a request for exemplary movies and all friends that she talks to. It probably helps for situations like this too, when she's got away for a while. But really, ah, Lily's a very special person to you, isn't she? She is, I love her very much. Hanako looks down and smiles as he thinks of her. And my friendships were as deep as theirs. I have to admit to myself that I'm a little jealous of their relationship. We tell each other our email addresses and bum them into our respective phones. And I get Hanako's number from earlier and put it into my contact lists. Done, that makes free now. Free? Well, it must be Akira, I imagine. Lily, Akira, and you. Ah, Akira. She's an interesting person, isn't she? She is, she's also very, really nice though. Her suit makes her look a bit cool. I'm a little surprised to know each other well, what with her job taking up so much of her time. Anika looks down a little and takes another sip of her drink. If I wasn't looking intently at her face, I'd miss a small smile perched on it. I guess when she knows so few people, those she knows must mean a lot of her. How many do you have? Me? Uh, about nine or ten. I hesitate to go into them for fear of rubbing in the fact that Hanko doesn't have parents, or apparently even close relatives. Two of those are Shizune and Misha too, which is another uh, kind of works. And I imagine that uh, Lily would have more than both of us put together, probably. Hanko gives each other's giggle and I can't help smiling. It's a good feeling that she's gotten this comfortable around me. At times like this, I feel like I'm getting close to talking to her true self. Do you mind if I ask something that I've been wondering? Anako shakes her head as she takes the last sip of her tea and she gets off. You don't seem very jealous of Lily having lots of friends. Uh, don't you want to make some more friends yourself? Or get to know some of hers? 
I'm not jealous, I don't like people, so I don't mind not having any friends. <laughs> just like, I'm not jealous, I don't like people. Just like, yeah, I, I generally don't like people. <laughs> you know, honestly, I kind of feel the same. I mean, I don't hate people. Well, I, I kind of like, it's called misanthropic, or I forget what it's called. But I do feel that bit is just like, I'm kind of like cynical when it comes to people in general. But I don't necessarily just hate someone. But like, see a stranger, you're not gonna be like, I fucking hate you! It's just, I kind of like hate, like, I suppose human nature for the most part. It's like, uh, we're such a shitty species, you know, cynical and all that. But it doesn't mean I hate people in particular. But I prefer, like, to have small, you know, group rather than, you know, like, have a shit ton of friends. I mean, how the hell would that work? Just go on, like, big outings or something? How can you stay in contact with so many people? I prefer, like, a small kind of group, essentially. Kind of like Hanukkah, like I said, in that sense. That's really not the answer that I was expecting. She doesn't look fearful or sad as she says this, but rather quite serious. Hey. Anika rubs her arm awkwardly, having taken my quietness as a reason to continue. Pepsi. I'm not really... <laughs> like, yeah, randomly just say that out of nowhere. That's because I'm still at this can here that I didn't even mention till now. I'm not really sure what I should say, so I end up simply giving my, er, my attention in silence. In middle school, I got I uh, got bullied a lot. I was called names and got excluded from work groups and sports teams. There were worse things too. Ah, I can see how where this thing came in, man. Me, like like in the previous part where I showed my left hand. I remember kind of being bullied back in school for that as well, but I can't really remember all the detail. I'm not sure if it involved me much back in the day, but nowadays I'm just like, yeah, whatever. It's like, uh, if someone like were to look at my left hand, it'd be like, make fun of it, so I probably wouldn't really take it all that serious, I don't know. Just be like, hey, it looks like a raptor claw, just like, uh-huh, whatever. Doesn't really bother me as much. Surprisingly, really. But it probably did back in the day, I don't know. And that's what made you not like all people. She shakes her head. That was elementary school. I feel bad for bringing this up now. Adults have enough problems dealing with particle scarring. Children would be all the worse. I'd assume that uh, the way she tried to make her presence not felt was just to avoid people staring at her, but because she was afraid of them. Certainly not because she genuinely didn't want to interact with them in the first place as well. I noticed the compensation from my neglected smoothie forming a little puddle around the bottom of the cup, so I took the opportunity to finish it off. As I drink, she begins to fiddle with her phone. It looks like she's remembered the people around her again and begun to tense up. You know, this reminds me of a similar situation that I was in. I was like, uh... Uh, it's kind of like a small restaurant kind of thing. And it was with someone I knew and they were like silently going over something. I think it was like... Because I was getting a bus pass or something and just kind of like reading over it. just like... Okay, so we'll see what we can do about this. But all in complete silence and all this noise around me, all these people, my anxiety just went straight to hell. Up. Just like, oh, so uncomfortable. So I can totally relate to that. It isn't exactly a cheap phone. I had to save up for quite a while to afford one when I got mine. If Lily went to a private school, she probably wouldn't have too much trouble getting one for her present, though. Watching her fiddle with it gives me an idea. Hey, Hanako. Wait for me, I'll be right back. I put the now empty cup down, slip my phone into my pocket, and begin to move on, carefully stepping around the bag I place beside my feet. Thankfully, sitting around while talking to Hanako has helped me feel a lot uh, better than before. Wait, what? Where are you going? Uh, I'll just see you. I'll be back in a bit. As much as I'd have liked to have jogged back, I know full well that I couldn't. End up walking back to the cafe, a little blue bag in my right hand. 
Monica notices me quickly, looking about as confused as she did when I left. I deposit the deposit bag in front of her and sit back down. What's this? It's for you, you can open it. But, go on. She looks very unsure about it, but eventually gives in, slowly opens the bag and picks its contents out. A silver chain a phone strap dangles from her fingers, ending in a delicate flower. It isn't exactly a masterwork of jewellery, but it's about as much as I can afford. Monica's eyes light up when she looks at it. It's the kind of reaction I was hoping for. The summer sun's light glints off the silver as it twists to and fro a little. It's not too outstanding, uh, but that tape is a little out or whatever, but still looks a little charming. I think it suits her well. Monica lowers the phone strap to the table and looks to me once more. But it's not Christmas or my birthday. It's fine, don't worry about it. I just thought it might be nice to have some in the decorated bowl. Don't have anything to give to you. I told you it's fine. Friends gonna give uh, things to each other like this sometimes, right? Friends. Hanako knows her face so much that I can't see her expression. She eventually nods, while taking her phone and fiddling with a strap to attach it properly. She looks to me and smiles as she holds up her phone, now adorned with a little flower. Thank you, Sal. Her smile proves infectious. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a couple getting up and leaving. It reminds me that the bus back to the town, well, oh, Yamaku will be coming soon. I guess I'd better be going if I don't want to catch the bus back to town. You coming as well? Uh, yes. She hastily nods before carefully putting her phone back into her pocket and getting out of her chair. I do the same and pick up the bag I'd left beside me on the way out. We walk side by side as we make our way to the bus station, exchanging no words between us. Monaco's gaze is firmly locked ahead of her, but she looks very uh, happy with herself. I'm not sure what I should say to her, but I am also not sure what I need to say. The fact that Anko is happy and happy to visit me is enough to make the load on my arm feel like as well. You know, remember the previous part when I like uh, looked at uh, the library section and extras on this and looked through Anko's one and it showed the only like three or four scenes left. And we still haven't had that scene, keep in mind, you know, every rat has to have one of those scenes. And uh it's just like, if that's the case, then, is it, well, Emmy's route ended with one of those scenes, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's, like, next to last scene or something, but, and it goes right into that, right after, I might as well just click, <laughs> just wait till that before rambling. Finally reaching the classroom after the usual walk from the dormitories. I step inside, my eyes immediately turn to the third seat from the left in the back row. Monaco seats. What is this scene called? Whispering Dutch. Wait, whisper Dutch. It's empty and after glancing around the classroom, it looks like she isn't here yet. The two girls from the newspaper club are here in the two seats to the left of Monaco's. As much as any of me sure, but that's about it. We exchange morning greetings before I take my seats. I have to admit that this is a bit of a relief. This gives me at least uh, a few more minutes to think. Not that I haven't been doing so previously. Ever since our trip to town, Hanako has been on my mind. I still don't know what to make of my relationship to Hanako. I like her. I can admit that much to myself. I want to protect and shield her from the pain she feels. I really don't f uh, think my feelings are just those of friendship anymore. But that said, I feel like I don't even know her. If I made a move on her, how will she take it? Is she an emotional yeah is she in an emotional state that allows her to make a reasonable decision about a relationship? How would she cope with anything that might happen afterwards? There's also the possibility that I'm just completely misinterpreted Hanako. What a difficult thing to do with someone whose social skills seem to be so undeveloped. The sound of footsteps coming comes up to the door making me poke up. It ends up just being me. Iki, it's like, oh, it's just you, it's just like, I remember I read up that apparently, like, someone did write a route for her, but it isn't in the visual novel itself, it's only in text form or something. 
She barely acknowledges my existence when I accidentally make eye contact with her. About to look away, but another person comes in not long after she takes her seat. It's Hanako! I feel myself freeze as I see Hanako enter. This isn't a rational reaction, but I have no idea about how I should act or what I should say to her. For a moment, our eyes meet. And then, just as quickly, she looks away and moves to her seat without saying a single word. As is now usual for the period following classes, my face is very deep in the book that I find thoroughly uninteresting. Yeah, still the same scene. Studying is not something that comes natural to me. I didn't study a lot to welcome to Maku, and until now I've largely managed to coast through uh, on town alone. It's frustrating that I can't do that anymore. Judging by the faces of the other few students in the library, I don't think I'm alone in my safe place. Misery loves company, I suppose. I decided to spend lunch time with Hanako, since we haven't had lunch here for a while now. Might as well have spent the time studying, though, aside from infinitely uh, small snippets of small talk, there was barely a word said between us. Why does she keep doing this to me? I just want to protect her, be there for her. But every time I feel like we're coming closer, we end up throwing her away from Are you busy? Ah, uh, Hanukkah! Oh! My head wraps around in surprise because it's a retreating fight. <laughs> yeah, she probably would with that tone of voice, like, Hanukkah! That was bad timing. If I hadn't been thinking about her at that very moment, I probably wouldn't have been nearly as so startled. Uh, sorry, it startled me. It's the complete opposite. I find myself staring at her longer than I should, so I go back to the next lining on the table in front of me. I feel more like I'm just staring at the words rather than actually reading. I get the feeling Hanako can notice this as well, so I sigh and close the book. What's up? What's up, Hanako? Find out next time, because it's freaking nearly 10, I've got to edit and upload and all that jazz. So I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.